Thanks for joining us here today at Emmanuel, where we're one church with multiple locations. In a few moments, you're going to hear practical teaching from God's Word that we hope is relevant and inspiring to your life. If this service blesses you and you'd like to give financially, you can go to eclife.org, click Give, and choose Online Viewer as your campus. Thank you, and get ready for a life-changing message. Welcome to Emmanuel. We'd love for everyone in here to stand to your feet. Help us sing some songs. Salvation sounds a new beginning. As distant hearts begin.
Draw. 
Enjoy! 
Thank you. You may be seated. These songs about God's love have been so encouraging to me. And just the song that it said that his love remains constant in the world of change. And I don't know about you, but my life has a lot of change quite frequently. And just to know that we can hold on to God and he never changes is so encouraging. We're so glad that you're here. And if it happens to be the very first time that you walked through Emmanuel's doors, we want to welcome you. And I'd like to encourage you. I want to walk through the service of what it looks like just so that you know what to expect. In a few minutes, um, in a few minutes, we'll be passing the offering buckets, and that's intended for those who call Emmanuel home, so don't feel obligated to participate. And then after that, Danny's going to step up, and he's going to kick off our brand new series called Mixtape, and we're really excited about it. If you would like to connect with us, there's a connection card right in front of you on the back of the seat. And if you would take a moment to fill that out, and after the service, just drop it off at our information center. It's out to the right as you exit. And we have a special gift for you for just being here for the first time. Um, you can also drop it in the offering bucket if that's more comfortable for you, but we hope that you'll come back next weekend. Now, if you happen to be sitting in here and you're ages 7th through 12th grade, I know that we have a lot over here. Can we have a shout out? Come on, guys. 7th and 12th graders, I want to encourage you, tonight is your next monthly verb gathering. And what that is, it's a time when all of the students from all of our campuses come together in one place, and it'll be at the Banta campus. And you don't want to miss tonight. You have all afternoon to text your friends and get them there with you. If you need transportation, go to myeclife.org and, and just register and someone will come and pick you up. But it's going to be an incredible evening. Last month they had 286 who attended and one student received Christ, so that was awesome. So middle school and high school, don't miss tonight at six o'clock at our Banta campus. And then finally, I wanna remind you that Wednesday is the final day for you to register for baptism. Baptism will be at the end of the month. And in your handout, um, you will have all the details of how you can get registered. And I wanna encourage you to grab a handout every single time you come in. We have incredible host team members that will hand you one as you come in, but it has your weekend notes. And then it has a lot of information that our communication team has put together for you to take home so that you can get connected to the life of Emmanuel. Now I want to pass it off to Danny, and he has an important announcement. Thanks, Jenny. Well, what's up, guys? How are you feeling today? Pretty good? Man, it is good to be back uh, in town. My wife and I were able to get away for a little bit, and on uh, something called a study break, where I'm studying half the time and vacationing half the time, and so I was able to get some good stuff done as well as relax, but we are super glad to be back, and I missed you guys. I really did, so I love you. Hey, uh, really quick, if you're a guest with us here today, my name's Danny, and we're going to get to our service here in just a second, or the rest of our service here in just a second. Before we do that, I have a quick announcement for you. I know that many of you like our church. When I say that, I, what I mean is like you sort of like, it's sort of like Twitter. When you see something good on Twitter, you hit like. Anybody do that? I do that all the time. It's like, oh, that's a good idea. That's a good quote. Sometimes you even retweet it if you really like it. Uh, there's a lot of you that like our church and you like coming. Maybe you like those music. Didn't we have awesome music today? Wasn't that pretty good? Yeah, we like it. So you might hit like for that. And then you might think that the pastor's funny or whoever, you know, might think it's a good message. And so you might hit like again. But really, really honestly, beyond that, there's not much going on in your relationship between the church and yourself. You kind of like it. Maybe you attend on the weekend, maybe twice a month. Well, what we've done, what we're doing is we've created a, a something called the growth track. We would like all of you to go a little bit deeper with our church. Instead of being the type of person that just likes it, maybe attends, we want you to become part of the life of the church. So we've created this thing called growth track. It's basically four steps to help you get more integrated or assimilated into the life of the church. You're going to learn how to trust God with your whole life. You're going to learn how to connect with the body of believers, the body at a deeper level and community. Then you're going to learn how to discover how uh, God has uniquely created you uh, to, to be part of his kingdom and part of advancing his kingdom in this world. And then you're going to learn how to get plugged in so that you can make an impact with your gift. So it's a four-step process. It's going to start next month, in the month of August. So I'd like you to go to myeclife.org and register for the growth track. This isn't just for people who started coming recently. This is for everyone who's not yet gotten involved in the life of the church at a deeper level. Okay, so let me explain a, a little bit what it looks like. You, can, you don't have to go through the four steps 
uh, in order. You can, actually, you can actually go to step two and step three if you miss step one, or if you miss step one and two, you can start at step three and go to four and then circle back and do one and two, okay? So that's kind of how it looks. That You don't have to go to the first one. So if you miss the first one, you don't have to skip all of them. And so we're going to offer them the first four Sundays of every single month. Some months have five Sundays. We won't do it on the fifth Sunday. So the first four Sundays of every month will have step one, step two, step three, step four. You can jump in at any time. So I'm going to challenge you to go to myeclife.org and register for the August growth track. Now, you might notice that step one in the growth track is filled up. That's okay. Still register, and you can go to step two, because remember, you don't have to do them in August order, okay? And then if you're a procrastinator and you missed the month of August, any procrastinators out there? <laughs> if you missed the whole month of August, guess what we're going to do? We're going to do it in September. We're going to do it in October. We're going to do it in November because we want, here's the, here's the goal behind the growth track, okay? We know you're busy. We don't want to give you one more thing to do, okay? That's not the goal. Let's keep people busy. No, 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 no. We want you to go from being a liker, a spectator, a fan, to being part of the mission here at the church. God has uniquely gifted you, and he wants you to discover what that gift is so that you can be a blessing, so that you can be part of the church, not just someone who likes the church. You understand that? Yes or no? Yeah? All right. So go to the growth track. Register myeclife.org for the August growth track. Will you pray with me as we receive our offering? God, thank you that we have an opportunity to gather and be part of the mission of seeing people come to Christ and grow in Christ to make disciples. We know, God, we know that what you're up to in this world is, is transforming human hearts. That's what you're doing. You're overcoming evil with good, starting in our homes, by transforming our hearts and human hearts. Thank you for the calling on this church. Thank you that we can be involved in the mission that you have given us. Thank you for the opportunity at this time to give a small portion of the finances you've blessed us with to help push that mission forward. I hope this, this offering and the giving and the hearts Bring a smile to your face today. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want to welcome you again to Emmanuel. Are you guys having a fun time so far today? Are you excited to be here? Man, I hope you are. I am fired up normally on the front end. I'm fired up a lot, but on the front end of a series, I get very excited because of the new content, and it's just, an, it's just something about launching a brand new series. That's what we're doing today called Mixtape. If you're a guest with us here today, it's a great time for you to join us on the front end of a series uh, because it usually goes about two, three weeks, sometimes four weeks. So thank you for being with us here today. If you're a guest, for, uh, for accepting someone's invitation. If you're joining us online today, you're dialing in over the internet or through our church app, we want to welcome you as well. We hope that you're blessed uh, through this service, through this talk as well. So, mix tape. What in the world is that about? How many of you remember this? <laughs> Anybody remember this? Wow. Like, like just, just me showing you this brings you back, doesn't it? To a time in your life, like, you're, like right now, memories are flooding your, you know, your favorite, you know, cassette tape. Some of you, you need to understand, you've never seen one of these before? This is called a cassette tape, okay? <laughs> Students, you ever seen one of these before? You used to put these into a radio, a, rece- a cassette recorder, and then hit play, and it would play music. These came before CDs. Some of you are like, what's a CD? Wow, it's amazing where, where we've come today. 
cassette tapes. Fascinating idea. What you'd do is you'd go buy your favorite music, favorite artists, and on that cassette tape you'd have, I don't know, 8 to 10, 12 songs, right? And then we'd play them in our cars, and when cars used to have tape decks and that. And, and, uh, and the problem with these guys is that oftentimes you'd like maybe two songs on the tape, you know, unless you're really a fan of that band or whatever, you, you know, you, you like to. And so what you would do is kind of get a little bit of a few songs from this tape and a few songs from this tape and a few songs, maybe one or two songs from this tape. And you'd put it on what's called a mix tape. Now, I always thought it was called a mixed tape. It's not. It's mixed tape. Anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> And you'd put them all on one tape. Now, these were incredibly difficult to make. Do you remember how hard it was? Like, like if you didn't have all of the tapes, you'd have to put one of these in the recorder, and then you'd have to wait for the song to come on the radio, and then hit record real fast. And you'd like to miss the first two seconds or so. Do you remember that? It was crazy. We actually had a friend of ours in the neighborhood that got really good at making mixtapes. And so we would go to him, I just said mixed, we would go to him and we would say, hey, we would like a tape of this song, uh, uh, a mixtape of this song, this song, and this song. And then he would take all of his tapes and he would recall a mi- record a mixtape and then we would pay him because he got so good at it in the neighborhood. Because these were very, very difficult to make. It took, literally would take hours to do. Now, in today's world, what we have is things like Spotify, and Apple Music and all these different things. And literally within a couple of minutes, if you pay a couple of dollars a month, you can make a a playlist of all your favorite music from all your different bands. Is that not? Some of you are just flat out spoiled. (laughs) You just are. You don't know what it's like. But I take advantage of that. Now I can make a playlist literally within minutes because I've got Spotify or whatever and, and, and just enjoy some of my favorite music. Why do we do that? Why do we make these tapes? Why, why, do, we, why do we spend time making, making playlists? And I think you know why. It's, it's kind of obvious. We love music, don't we? Any music lovers out there? You just, you just love music. I mean, it's, it's such a huge part of our lives. It moves us. It inspires us. It, 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 it touches us and it, at the soul level. I love what the philosopher Plato said. He said, music is a moral law. It gives soul to the universe, as if that were possible. It it gives wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and charm and gaiety to life and to everything. Music. Music is everywhere in our lives today, is it not? You go into a grocery store, what do you hear in the background? Music. In fact, grocery stores play different types of music at different times during the day based on the mood they think that you're in so that you will buy more stuff. That's true, so that you do some research, that's true. Because music, they understand, affects us in powerful ways. It affects us at the soul level. You go into a coffee shop, what do you hear? Music in the background, right? Before a sporting event, a high school sporting event or a professional sporting event, right? What, what, What do they do in the beginning and a lot of times during? There's music, right? There's a song, you sing the national anthem. You, get, you know, you go to a wedding, what do you hear at a wedding most of the time? You hear the song, you hear music, right? I was at a wedding just this week, and the, the pastor there was preaching, and he was talking about, you know, the Bible, what the Bible had to say about love. It was very moving. He was really giving out some good, some good truth from the scriptures, and he knew the bride and the groom, so it was very touching. You know, he's making jokes and kind of weaving in some of the truth of the Bible, and I was moved. I really was by his words, but it wasn't until this guy grabbed the guitar and this girl started singing when the tears started to flow. Like everything the preacher said was great. And then the music just put me over the edge and there I was sitting next to my wife, tears, big, big, giant crocodile tears. And and I said to myself, get yourself together, dude. (laughs) Dudes don't cry at weddings, you know? Real men cry. That's not the point of this talk. Anyway, it was it was the listen. It was the music. It was the song. It was the lyrics. It just it just went deep in. There's something about it. You know, you go to a wedding and there's there's music. You go to a funeral and there's there's music. You go everywhere. You get in your car and what do we do? We we immediately turn the music on. We're we're studying. If you're a student, you're studying for for an exam and 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 there's 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 music going on with our earbuds, right? Our lives are surrounded and driven and shaped and molded by by music. It's incredible. 
In, in America alone, the music industry generates 16 billion, with a B, 16 billion dollars a year just in the United States. 40 billion dollars worldwide per year. Music is huge. And there's all different types of music, right? All different genres and areas, and, and everyone kind of resonates with a different area. Some of you love country music. Any country music lovers out there? Don't understand you folks. It's like life is... No, no, no. Here's why I don't understand you. Seriously, I'm going to throw you under the bus just for a second. Because life is sad enough. Like, why would you want to make yourself any sadder? Gosh. Right? Country music. Anyway... Then there's rap. So any, any rap? There's any rap lovers out there, right? Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> That's dating myself a little bit, but you know, um, <laughs> I think they still tour. Anyway, you know, there's there's all these different genres of music. There's there's heavy metal and there's pop music and there's alternative music and. And it's just, there's so many different genres of music. I mean, and, and we connect with not just one, but two. Some of us like all of it, you know? And, and, and then within those, those different genres or areas of music, there's, there's different bands and different artists, and we all connect with different artists. Some of us, some of us connect with the Beatles. We go back, we, can, we love the Beatles. We just listen to them over and over and over again, and we just connect with their style. And I don't even know what style that is, but... Some of us connect with Bono and U2 and, and just, just, just love him and love their style and their sound and, their, and, and all the bands that kind of sound like them. By the way, they're coming, to, they're coming to Indy, so get your tickets. They're expensive. Some of, us, some of us connect with the guy from Kiss. I'm not sure why, I've not, but I don't know why anyone would connect with him, but some, some do and love him and don't even know what his name is, but he's pretty popular. Um, some of us connect with the guy from uh, the, the, the country music folks, Faith Hill and the, Tim McGraw, these, these guys here. Um, I don't really know what they sing, again, because I don't listen to country, but I hear it's really good. That's what they say. Then there's Bono. So, you know, I'm not Bono, but uh, Chris Martin from Coldplay. I actually like this guy. I listen, I've got a, play, a Coldplay clay playlist. It's just kind of every now and then I listen to them. It's kind of fun. Any, any, any Coldplay fans out there? Yeah, a lot out there. Then for the younger generation, there's this band called One Direction. I've never heard a song they sing, you know, but are they popular guys? I'm not sure. Just kind of looking over here and like, no, they're, I don't even think they're together anymore, but you know. We all like different artists, different styles, different bands, and it's, it's just crazy. Music is everywhere. Now, why would we do a series like this? Some of you are wondering, okay, everything you just said is so obvious. Duh. Yeah, music is important. We all like different bands. We all like different genres. Why would do we do a series in church? In fact, over the last 10 years that I've been the pastor here, we've never done a series on music, never talked about it in a focused way. And it's such a huge part of our lives. I got to thinking, how, would, how have I missed this all these years? We've never talked about music. And here's why we're doing it. It, it hit me. Watch this in your notes there, which I encourage you to always take notes because you forget most of what you don't write down. Music has great power for good or for harm. That's why we would do a series on it. It's a huge part of our life. It's everywhere we go. And it has great power for good or for harm. Music, I mean, literally has the power to shape a decade. It has the power to influence social movements and to spur social movements. In fact, if you look at all of the big social movements in our world, behind the scenes, there are lyrics and songs. Some would even argue, as I did a little research for this talk, that the songs that were written in the 1960s that were against the war in Vietnam helped to, helped to actually bring the war to an end. Andrew Fletcher wrote this, he said, let me write the songs of a nation. I don't care who writes its laws. Now let me, I don't want to blow past this idea because it's, it's true and it's powerful. What he's saying here is that the, the lyrics and the music of a country, the lyrics and music of a nation have more impact on that nation than the legislation and the laws that are passed by the Congress of that country. Wow, is that true? I believe it is. Music is powerful. Why? Because it, it hits us here. It moves us in our, at the soul 
level. So what I want to do in this series is talk about what music is and kind of what it does and its effects and then try to challenge you, challenge myself, to leverage music for good instead of harm. In your notes, here's how I want to start. Music affects your emotional state. Music affects, another way to say it would be, music affects how you feel. Music can influence your levels of joy. It can influence your levels of peace. It can influence your levels of safety or security. It can influence your levels of comfort. It can also influence levels of anger, frustration, rage, confusion in your life. It's an incredible force on your emotions for good or for bad in our lives. The Chinese word for music is made up of two syllables, yin and yar. Literally means sound and happiness. See, the Chinese people realize and recognize that music has a direct impact on how we feel as human beings. You ever watch professional athletes get ready for a game? They can't do this at the college level because I don't think the coaches allow it. But if they did, the college, the college players would do it too. And I'm a basketball fan, so I watch basketball players warm up. And if you've ever seen them warm up, I'll just give you a picture of one point guard from the Washington Wizards. His name was John Wall, but they all do it. John Wall is preparing before a game, and what do you see on his head? Headphones, right? Now, is he listening to the last sermon from his, that his pastor gave? I wish. <laughs> I wish John Wall came to Emmanuel. Maybe he'll watch online. I don't know. But what they do is they, they get these headphones on and, and they're not listening to talks and they're not listening to news. They're listening to music of their choice. And they all do it. What are they doing? They're getting themselves jacked up. They're getting themselves ready to enter into battle to play this game. I remember in high school when I played, when I played basketball, we did the same exact thing without headphones, except we would play it over the loudspeakers. We would hand select the, the most intense songs, the, the songs that had the fastest beat, and, and we would crank it up as loud as we can. And then we, when, when the game was about to start, we'd all run out of the locker room, and the music is blaring. We're like, Rah! And, for, and, so, and I'm not kidding you, it had an effect on us because you could jump a little higher, and you felt like you were running faster, and you were just jacked up. I was in the gym the other day doing a workout, and I was just watching this other dude. He was, he was, doing, his, he was doing chest, and, and he's in there, and he's just going. And he's one of those big dudes with a tank top on, huge pecs and biceps. <laughs> Didn't look like me. And he had... <laughs> And he had his earphones in, and he was working out so hard and so fast that the, the weights were, make, were clanging, you know. And, and normally when somebody does this, it, it's kind of like, okay, you're a little bit over the top. But when you're huge, like, you don't say anything. It's like, dude, if you want to, like, smash the weights together, go ahead, you know what I'm saying? So he's in there, and he's just, he's doing chest, and he's bouncing from machine to machine, and, you know, this and that. And he's making a bunch of noise, and in between every, in between every rep, I was getting tickled. I didn't say anything, obviously, but in between, in between every rep, he, he, would, he would finish, he would go. And then, and it was so funny. And then he'd go. And he'd go. It was so awesome. And listen, you could not convince me that that music was not making him bigger. I promise you. I promise you. You know, and I'm listening to like a, a podcast on personal development as I work out. <laughs> like, no wonder I look like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole body of research out there now that supports this whole thing called music therapy and it's it's scientifically proven you can check it out it's amazing the impact that music has on our internal internals our emotional side in fact you know um, it's it's been proven that music changes our brain chemistry like it it does it it, it impacts us our, our heartbeat and our breathing naturally adjust to the beat of a song. It's been scientifically proven. And so literally, I can say with confidence to you today on this stage that God has created you to respond to music. Physiologically, something changes inside of you. And that's why I believe over 1,100 verses in this book refer to music. Think about that. 
Over 1,100 Bible verses are related to music or mention music. The largest book right in the center of the Bible, which I encourage everyone to read and reread and read and reread, is called what? The Psalms. What are the Psalms? Yeah, it's 150 songs. It's all music. No wonder. Because God has wired you and me to respond to music. Have you ever noticed how you can remember stuff better to music? We teach the little kids the alphabet with music. We teach the little kids to memorize the states and the countries and math with music. And all of a sudden when you put it to music, it affects them and they can remember better. And those of you who are teachers, you know that. It's powerful. There's a great story in the Bible about a guy named Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel and Man, he had it made. God had hand-selected him to be the first king. All he had to do was love God with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength. All he had to do was obey God. All he had to do was keep God first, and God would have just continued to prosper him as the king, and Israel would have prospered. But he messed up. He disobeyed God on several fronts, and God decided he was going to replace him with a guy named David. And it's interesting how the story plays out because God uses music to get David into place to replace Saul. I want to read you you a short uh, part uh, part of the story here in 1 Samuel chapter 16. It says, Now the Spirit of the Lord, or the Holy Spirit of the Lord, was, was removed from Saul. It left Saul. And the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. Now, I know that in a crowd this size, many of us have experienced depression and fear. Am I right? Yes or no? Now, I'm not suggesting that God sent a tormenting spirit into your life to cause that, but nevertheless, we have experienced depression and fear. Saul had a tormenting spirit from God that produced this feeling, this sadness, this fearfulness in his life. I want you to see what his advisors, what his crew, what the guys around him, his servants, I want you to see what they, the idea that they come up with to help Saul with this tormenting spirit that was causing depression and fear. Watch this. So some of Saul's servants said to him, a tormenting spirit has come from God troubling you. Let us find some Zoloft. (laughs) Let us us go get some Prozac from the, they didn't have that back then. So what they resorted to was a good, say it with me, a good musician. Not just any musician, but a really good musician, right? And this musician is going to play the harp whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you. Listen to how they conclude their argument. He will play soothing music, and you will soon be well again. Wow. What they understood, even back then, was that music impacts our emotional state. It can literally make us feel better. So, so what they do is they go find David. David is a, 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 a warrior. He's a musician. He's a poet. He's a writer. And they bring him into Saul's camp, and, and, and watch what happens in verse 23. And whenever the tormenting spirit from God troubled Saul, David would play the harp, and then Saul would, say it with me, feel better. See, music impacts our emotional state, and the tormenting spirit would go away. This, when we look into the Bible, this is what we see, that music has a powerful impact on our emotional state of being. Martin Luther, the great reformer of the Protestant church, wrote this. He said, next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. My heart, which is full to overflowing, has often been solished and refreshed by music when sick and weary. Have you been there? Have you ever been down and discouraged and all of a sudden you hear a song or you play a song or a song comes on the radio and and you feel your spirit being lifted or put back together in some small way and you feel refreshed? That's the power of music. So hopefully by now I've convinced you that music is powerful and its effect on you is an emotional effect. And it could be for the negative or it could be for the positive. So let me ask you this question as we're coming down the home stretch here. How important is your emotional state? In other words, how important is, how, is it that you feel well? How important is that? How important is, that you, is it that you have high levels of joy in your life on a daily basis? How important is that? Very important? Not so important? 
How about your peace levels? How important is it for you to have, have peace flooding your soul? That's an emotion. That's an emotional state to be peaceful in the midst of all the chaos. How important is that? Pretty important. How important is it for you to feel like, you know what, whatever's going on in life, it's going to be okay because God's got a plan because all things do, in fact, work together for the good of those who love God. How important is it for you to have deep levels of faith? That's also an emotion, to feel safety and security in the midst of all the chaos that's going on in life. How important is that? Would you say that's very important? Eh, it's so important or just not important at all? I would say it's everything. How important is your emotional state? I would say it's everything. You say, what are you talking about? Is it really that important? Is it everything? Is it the ball game? Is it the whole package? I would say, yes, it is. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 15, this is what King Solomon wrote. He said, for the despondent, for those who are sad, for those who are depressed, for those who are downcast, every day brings trouble. Now, normally we don't think this way. Normally we think... When things, are, when things are going bad, that's when I feel discouraged. Solomon says, no, it doesn't work that way. When you're discouraged, everything is tainted with the darkness. Because our emotional state dictates or, help, or causes us to interpret our events in a, in a dark way. Way. For the despondent, every day brings trouble. E, have you met somebody like, like this? Maybe, maybe you're this person today. No matter, no matter what comes your way, even if it's positive, uh, that's why they took Eeyore out of the, the cartoon. See? <laughs> this is like something good would happen to Eeyore. Uh. See, for the despondent, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter if things, if you get the raise, if someone got healed, it, it, does, it doesn't matter if things go well, because, because your, your mindset, your emotional state is interpreting the events of life, and you're always sad, and always down, and always discouraged. See, a lot of us like to, to, to flip it over and say, well, the reason I'm despondent is because, let me tell you about my circumstances. My wife, my kid, my husband, my this, my that, my health. And we go into this story about our circumstances, and then the person who's listening to you about your circumstances and why the circumstances have caused you to be down and down, you know, discouraged, well, then we're sitting there listening going, you know, because we're going to be nice. Oh, yeah, I would be down too if that happened to me. And we kind of validate your story. And now you've justified the reason why you're despondent and you can't get out because you've got your reasons. David says, no. Solomon says, no, it's not like that. I mean, you could play that role. You can tell that story. Or you can decide to take control of your emotional state and then life is tainted with sunshine. Watch, watch this. Watch this. But on the other side, for the happy heart, life is a continual feast. In other words, the person, the person who has a, a happy emotional state, a positive emotional state, a joyful emotional state, a, an emotional state that's filled with peace and positivity, well, they interpret the events of life totally differently. And when negative things start to happen, they say, you know what, it's going to be okay. There, there's a lesson in this. God's growing me through this. And, and there's, a, there's a positivity. And life is a continual feast. And you can't hardly get them down. Their circumstances don't discourage them because their emotional state is so strong. And that's my choice. And that's your choice. In your notes, the way I wrote it is this. Your emotional state determines the quality of your life. It's not your circumstances. Everybody wants to say, it's my circumstances that determine the quality of my life. The reason I'm so down, the reason I'm so discouraged, you don't understand it's because this happened and this happened and this happened. And I'm not downplaying the fact that negative circumstances touch our life. I'm not. They do. They touch mine. They touch yours. I'm not downplaying that. I'm just telling you that those are not the things that determine the quality of my life. It's my emotional state that I have control over that determines whether or not I'm having a continual feast or every day is bringing trouble. Yes or no? I know this is hard teaching, guys. I know it is, but do you agree with it? Yeah? Now, if that's true, which I believe it is, that our emotional state determines the quality of our life, not the other way around, let me ask you this question. If music has a huge impact on our emotional state, which it does, let me ask you this question. How are you using music? I mean, what, what has a bigger impact? What has a bigger influence? What shapes our emotional state more than music? 
I mean, everybody else knows it. The, the, the advertisers know it, and, and the coffee shops know it, and the grocery stores know it, and, and, every, and they know it at a funeral, and they know it at a birthday party, and they know it. Everybody else knows it. Do you know it? Do you know how powerful music is to control or influence your emotional state, which will determine the quality of your life? How are you using music? Most of us are haphazard with it. Whatever's on. Whatever's on the radio. Just, just haphazard. You, could, you almost use the word lazy. Whatever's on. We'll listen to. Well, when you, when, when you treat music that way, you're not understanding its influence on your emotional state. We just kind of flip it. Most of us treat music like we do food. We ask ourselves, what am I in the mood for? Cheese doodles. That's what I'm in the mood for. <laughs> then we go grab some cheese doodles. I want something salty. Give me something salty. I want some sugar. I'm Give me some ice cream. We ask, when it comes to food, unfortunately, most of us ask ourselves the wrong question. We ask ourselves what we're in the mood for. Well, I feel like Mexican. I feel like a cheeseburger. I feel like wrong, 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 wrong on every level. We're supposed to ask ourselves what food would give my body the nourishment that it needs so that I can do the things that God has called me to do. Uh Uh-oh, that's a different question. We might eat some different things if we started asking that question. (laughs) Maybe some more carrots or broccoli or, you know, some lean meats. I don't know. We might start eating some different stuff. How about asking a different question when it comes to music? What music is going to produce the emotional state that is going to produce an incredible quality of life for me? Whoa, well, that's a different question. You bet it is. It's strategic. And my challenge to you today is to be strategic with music by asking this simple question. Not what am I in the mood to listen to? I can feel kind of sad. Because here's what we do. We, when we feel kind of sad or down or even angry, we will find some music that resonates with that emotion. Have you noticed that? And then we put some angry music on, and then our mood gets even worse. <laughs> you know? Well, I feel kind of down. So we'll start, we'll start popping in some music that, you know, probably country that makes you feel like, you know. <laughs> then you feel even worse about yourself. Don't, don't, you have to, you have to make choices against your mood. Say, you know what? What emotional state is, is the godliest emotional state? What, 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 what does it look like to, to have the, the greatest emotions right now? Is it love? Is it joy? Is it peace? Is it courage? Is it faith? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now what music would produce those emotions? And then you, and then you get busy being strategic, selecting those songs. So in the morning, I'll tell you how I do this. So I read my Bible. I get up. First, I have a cup of coffee. <laughs> I go to my spot, get my one-year Bible out. Some of you follow me on Twitter, so you see me sometimes tweeting stuff out. And then I write stuff down that God's showing to me, and, and it's awesome, and God speaks to me, and it takes me about 30 minutes, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll close this up, and then I'll jump in the shower. And I'm, a, I'm like, you know, a two-song shower guy. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody, anybody resonate with that? It's probably too much information, but... <laughs> so I get in the shower, and I select. I select. I go through it. Sometimes it's this morning it was Bethel uh, worship. It is well. You heard this? It's unbelievable. And I select the songs with my app, hit play, and then I get in the shower. And even though my, my devotions most of the time are awesome and I'm hearing God's voice, when I get in the shower and there's mute worship music going, something happens that didn't happen when I was reading the Bible. It hits me in my heart, and all of a sudden, I'm in the, it doesn't happen every shower. I should probably stop talking about the shower. Okay. (laughs) Doesn't happen every time. But I'm in there, and all of a sudden, I hear something, and and I'm overwhelmed with love for God, or adoration for God, or gratitude for God, or thankfulness to God, or appreciation for grace, and and I start to cry in the shower. I know you're probably thinking, what a wimp. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) Naked and crying. There you go. (laughs) So weird. But it, what am I doing? See, I believe I was created to to love and adore and worship and be filled with joy and peace and and faith and courage. And I know that the music is going to do that. So I'm not popping in Pearl Jam, you know, as I'm taking a shower. I ain't doing it. Because I know that that's going to have some opposite effect in my life, my emotional state. So by the time I get out of the shower and I'm ready to go to work, man, I'm just like, yeah. 
most of the time. Whatever you have for me today, God, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to partner up with you and advance your kingdom in this world. And I'm going to love people and forgive people and, 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 and challenge people. And that's how I feel, right? Well, how did I get there? I'm telling you, I leveraged, I was strategic with music. So what we've done on our app, and I'm wrapping up. If you go to our church app, <clears throat> which I hope you have. If not, you can download it. When you click on our church app, what we've done, we haven't just put the talks on there for you, but we've all, we, the first button there is, is the music. And then you can pick whatever service you like. To, let's say we pick today's to service. You go to today's service, then you, you have an option of iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. So if you have Spotify, you click on Spotify. And there's the three songs right there that we played, that we sung this morning. So like one thing, do you guys like one thing? So you go to one thing right here, and if you have Spotify, it takes you right to it. And then you just hit play. And, of course, there's a problem, but, you know. <laughs> technology, you know. After you figure out what the problem is, then it, then it just plays. <laughs> Why did we do that? We want, we, want you to, we want you to leverage music for good. Students, listen up. Students, just because something's popular and hip and cool doesn't mean you should be listening to it. Students, ninth graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, 7th graders, 12th graders, don't be haphazard with music. Don't, don't feel like, well, I have to listen to it because all my friends are listening to it. If they ask me if I listen to it and I say I didn't listen to it, I'm not going to be cool. Come on. Come on. You should be proud to say, I've never heard that song. As a Jesus follower, as a Christ follower who's trying to, who's trying to protect your heart, your emotional state, you should, you should be proud that, that, that others think you're silly because you never heard that artist and you never heard that song that talks about drugs and sex and violence and all these different, I've just never heard that. I, I, I've never heard that song. Wow. What am I doing? Protecting students, protecting your emotional state. See how that works? Don't be haphazard with your music. It affects your emotional state. Yes, students? And it's not just for the students. It's for all of us. Music has a huge impact on our life. Be strategic with it. Now, I thought there's no better way to close today than with a song. And so what I've done is I've asked my friend George to come out and play a song from Third Day. Remember Third Day? It's a song I listened to way back in college, and every time I listen to it, even today, it reminds me of the grace of God. It reminds me that of the length that God would go to just to be with me. It blows me away and brings me to this emotional state of appreciation and gratitude. This is my friend George. George and I and I have been together for 15 years. 16, 16, 16. And way back in the youth ministry, we used to sing this song. He used to sing it, because I don't sing. He used to sing this song to our high school students 15 years ago. He's going to sing it for you today. I hope it has the emotional impact on you that it does on me. those dreams 
are an empty emotion It can never be done well, I never swam the deepest ocean But I walked upon the raging sea Just to be with you I would do anything no price I would not pay, yeah, no, just to be with you, I'd give everything, so I would give my life away, yeah, 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 and I know that you don't understand the fullness of my love. Died upon the cross for your sin, and I know that you don't realize how much that I gave you, but I promise I would do it all again. And just to be with you, I've done everything. There's no price I did not pay. I gave my life away Yeah, yeah, yeah I gave my life away Yeah, yeah, yeah Just to be with you Just to be with you Oh, just to be with you Oh, just to be with you As we wrap up, I just want to share with you that what George just sang about, he sang about Jesus coming to this earth, paying the price for our sin. You know, when I was 17, I realized that church and, and, and the gospel and Jesus really didn't mean anything to me because I didn't understand my condition. And it's only when you understand your condition that the gospel begins to look like something that you desperately need in your life. If you don't understand your condition, then church and Jesus gets reduced down to some self-help principles and things that might improve your life a little bit. Yeah, you should go to church because it's good information. And that's not what it is. That's not what it is. Jesus didn't come to this earth to, to join Aristotle and Plato and, and all the other philosophers to give good information. Jesus came to this world to die on a cross to redeem mankind, to remove your sin and your shame and your guilt, to break down the wall that separated you and God. And when you realize that you are separated from God, as I did when I was 17, and you realize there's no way I can be in a relationship with God unless someone does something about all of these lies and all of the deceit, and all of the backstabbing, and, the, and the, the, all the, the blackness in my heart. Unless somebody can do something about that, I'm in trouble. And when you begin to understand that, that's when Jesus becomes beautiful. And that's when his sacrifice on the cross starts to mean everything to you, because you're reaching out to him for life. So do you understand where you're at? As I did when I was 17, wrapped up in sin, going the wrong direction, hopeless in this life? Well, if you do, Jesus is saying to you, come. Come, because what I've done for you is I've given my life. There's no price I have not paid. I gave it away. I laid my life down on a cross so that you could be washed of your sin, so that I could be with you. That is the most beautiful message in the world. Will you embrace it today? If you're in your heart, you're saying, yeah, I think I want that. We'll just reach out to him today and say a simple prayer of faith. So I don't know, I've never prayed before. Okay, I will give you the words. 
and you take these words I'm about to give you and you pray them to God and I promise you that God will hear and he will save you and he will wash you and he will make you his child today. If you feel led to pray, just bow your head, close your eyes. Take these words, make them your own. Oh, Jesus, I need you. I need you to wash away all my sin. I've gone astray. I've broken your laws. Gone my own way. And I'm tired. I'm worn out. So I come to you with this undeveloped faith and I put my trust in you today. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. You bridged the gap. You removed the wall. Thank you. I embrace forgiveness today. I embrace your grace today. Make me your child by faith as I trust in you as my Savior. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Can we just give God glory today for what he's doing in our church, our campuses, online. Other people are watching in different states. Other people are watching in their homes right now. I want to thank God for what he's doing through our presence online. He's touching hearts. He's touching lives. Hey, if you prayed to receive Christ today, I want to encourage you on your way out to grab one of these one year New Testaments. They're in the back of the auditorium. If you're upstairs in the main level, grab one of these on your way out. I was so blessed to have someone in my life come to me immediately after I put my faith in Christ and say, you need to become a reader of scripture. You need to absorb it into your mind, absorb it into your heart because you'll be transformed by reading this book. I took that action and that's why I'm giving you that same instruction today. If you prayed to receive Christ and you're watching online, send us an email, give us your address. We will put one of these in the mail for you and you'll get one in the mail. Again, can we give God glory for what he's done today? Hey, next week, next week, here's the deal. We're going to dive into the, how God has given us music so that we can be brought into worship of him. We're going to unpack that idea next week. Bring your friends. Let's pack this place out. God bless you. Hey, forgot to pray. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. As we leave today, we go have lunch and spend time with our families. Help us to be strategic with music. Help us to be mindful of the things that are coming over, over the stations and our iPods. And God, if there's things on there that just are not healthy and helpful, help us to get rid of it. Help us to find stuff that's going to produce an emotional state that will give us the quality of life that you have designed for us. We love you. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. See you next week. Bring a friend.